The following content is not the fruit of my own research, but rather that of the good people of the RuneScape Wiki. All credit is given to them for the written information. Welcome to this episode of Lorescape. As always, the content within this video will be more so vocal than visual, so feel free to leave this video running as you do chores around the house, or even as you skill within the game or do something else. There will be some graphical supports, images, GIFs maybe, and also other links to other videos if you are confused about a certain lore figure. But other than that, there's not going to be much going on on screen. This week's episode will take place about a particular character, but before we get into that, first let's take a look at the screen that is currently on. You can see here the list of the Majorats themselves. The Zerusians are on the left. The Zamorikans are on the right, and the only neutral Majorat is in the middle, at the bottom. If you wish to see any of their histories, feel free to follow the link that will lead to their video once they are up. For now, enjoy this episode. Although supposedly a devout Zerosian, Sliske is very unlike his fellow Zerosian Majorat. In line with his titles, Sliske is extremely cunning, confident, an excellent liar and able to betray allies at a whim. He often works towards his own goals while making his allies believe what they want. Sliske is devious and manipulative and whatever he does it is always for the good of Zeros or himself. Whoever the two benefits, Sliske chooses the path he deems the most fun regardless of the other's opinions. He is said to be a devout Zerosian, and he regards the Zemuricans as stupid and misguided. Nevertheless, he is willing to agree with a Zerosian sacrifice at rituals, should that be necessary. As suggested by the fellow Majorat's comments, Sliske has been proven to be quite intelligent and very cunning, and he is very aware of how he is regarded. His serpent tongue abilities seems to be similar to the abilities of the Ring of Karos, and as an address states that too many would assume uh, his words to be just his manner of speaking, he is far from being a snake. Rather, his words carry weight in the mind and have a way of bending the weak to his will. He has also stated that power is fleeting and Sliske always gets what he wants out of deals, and he would advise, should you ever meet him, not to make deals with him. This has been very evident many times in history. Not much is known of Sliske's powers. He is known for delving in the shadows and having powers over shadows, as Zemurigal mentioned in his notes. Sliske's power over shadows is noted to be very useful by Azanadra, who states that not many of our kind are able to reach into the shadow realm, but of those who can, Sliske's mastery is unmatched. As an Adra has also said of Sliske, an ally he may be, but I did not become master of my lord's legions without being sure of the powers wielded by those close to me. Sliske is one of whose actions can be seen each and every day in the smallest of the world's details. Apart from that, Sliske also has great control over the undead, especially the Barrow's Whites which he regards as his uh, collection and personal army, and to which he can add at any point in time he deems necessary. However, only very powerful warriors are deemed worthy of being his slaves, unlike Zimurigal who has undeads at whim. Like the other Majorat, Siske was born on Freneske, a planet of perpetual warfare, along with many other tribes of the dreams of Ma. Here, he and the other Majorat would live to survive the elements and the destructive power of the legendary Mother Ma, an elder god that created their race and whom they would prevent from wreaking havoc on Freneske through the rituals of rejuvenation and innervation that Seren taught them while impersonating her. Although at least one Majorat regarded her as a mere myth and the rituals as superstitious traditions. 
Due to the constant conflict with neighboring tribes such as the Maserat as well as the frequent sacrifices at the rituals, the Maserat tribe never counted more than a few hundred members and was ruled cratocratically, which means by the strongest, basically. In the second age of Gelenor, however, the two demigods Iklarin and Amaskut traveled to Freneske in order to recruit the Majorat to fight the Zerosian invaders of their homeland, the Caridan Empire, in the Caridan Zerosian War. Some Majorat opposed the proposal, while others agreed to go, causing a large battle to break out. Both Azanadra and Temekel, two of the strongest Majorat at the time, argued that the Majorat should go with Iklarin. And Sliske was quite happy to leave Freneske as he considered it an extremely boring place with nothing to do. Eventually, after the death of Salisar and the sacrifice of Abrogol, Sliske and the others in favor of traveling to Gelenor emerged victoriously and the entire Majorat tribe accompanied the two gods to Gelenor. There, Sliske aided the Menafite warriors in driving back the Zerosian army with success and during this time they were known as the stern judges of Eklarin. He was described by Graham Cobold, a mercenary for the Menafites at the time, as being dangerous and untrustworthy, yet Cobold felt a connection with him. Siski fought with immense pleasure, constantly moving through the Shadow Realm to surprise his Zerosian opponents before quickly killing them and resurrecting them as undead whites. On one occasion, he saved Cobold from the blade of a Zerosian scout, but his, but his fingers to his lips grinned and disappeared, leaving the mercenary in awe. Soon, however, Siski's methods began to displease Eklarin, especially because he kept dead warriors from moving to the afterlife, using them as his slave instead. After the Zerosians were appealed from the desert, Eklarin requested for Siski to hand over his whites, and when he refused, he took all of Siski's whites by force and released their souls. Due to the aforementioned feud with Eklarin, he approached a Zerosian legate, a Ketonian demon named Duke Ceres, and made arrangements to desert the Menafites and join Zeros. He convinced most of the other Majorat to join him, and they convened at the fortress of Karid Et, where they met Zeros and joined him after he showed understanding of their ways. Sliske and the other Majorat soon emerged from the fortress, joining arms with the Zerosians, proceeding to slaughter the retreating Menafite armies. The god Tumekan, father of Iklarin and Amaskut, swiftly interfered by sacrificing himself, his armies, and all of his empire to repel the Zerusians. He used his power of fire to create a massive explosion, turning half of the empire into a desert wasteland as well as obliterating his own army and most of the Zerusian one. Of the approximately 500 Majorat present, less than a fifth survived the explosion thanks to Azanadra, who quickly erected a magical barrier as protection. Sliske was amongst those who survived and joined the remainder of the Zerusian army on the march to foreign tree. He was given the rank of Prefectus Praetorio in the Zerosian army, effectively making him the head of the Sentistan's secret police. Here he had nearly limitless power, with another Majorat known as Trindin serving under him, and few dared to question him. At some point, Sliske wrote and performed a play for Sentistan's elite, including demons and powerful humans, merchants, and bureaucrats. Before the play, Sliske would take unwanted humans from the city streets, dress them with brightly colored costumes and fit them with crude wooden masks. These masks would speak aloud and control the player's movements, causing them to perform Sliske's play jerkily, able only to watch themselves carry out these actions, powerless to resist. The climax of the play often saw the players forced to stab each other to death with their weapons, though in one particularly memorable showing, one actor died midway through the performance, and in response, well, Siski's mask continued to control the corpse as, as if it were alive. And so the show continued. Siski's play was immensely popular with the crowds and was performed a dozen times until Siski himself grew bored and moved on to another pet project. Not a lot is known about Siski's actions during the fall of Zeros when Zeros' general Zamorak started a rebellion which ended with Zeros vanished and Zamorak becoming a god himself, except that when Zamorak struck, Siski was elsewhere. Zamorak and Zaradomin attempted to capture and convert everything and everyone that remained of the Entilorda's empire around the god wars, which Zamorak had declared in an attempt to reclaim the Stone of Jazz. This Zerosian extermination proved mostly successful, seeing that nearly all Zerosian settlements fell or were captured and most of his followers switched sides, went into hiding, Siski among these, or were slaughtered. 
Whilst SK did not actively participate in the wars, unlike allies such as Azanadra or Wahis Yatel, he certainly did not he did have an involvement in them and is known to have done a number of things in them mostly to further the Zerosian cause. Sometime after his aid in the coup of Zaros, vampire overlord Lower Nil Virgidiad Draken took up the plan to conquer Hollow Land and claim it as his own, after which Draken invaded the country with his army of vampires. The defending Iceen put up a good fight but the country eventually fell. When Draken reached the capital Hollow Vale where humans and Iceen lived in peace, he managed to kidnap their queen's husband Acertes, forcing Queen Ephraite to surrender and give up the city. This is a lot of characters that you may not yet know, we will get to them in due time. Draken gave power to an already strong vampire named Venstrom Claus to find the last Iceen of our land, Ephraite's son Safalan, and renamed the city Mayor Ditch. Soon he turned the city into a ghetto where humans were farmed for blood and the entire continent was permanently covered in dark clouds. Its once pristine environment became a haunted swamp, infested by, with ferocious monsters. A Cerredominist campaign was launched at the end of the God Wars, one of several in history that attempted to liberate the Sanguinisti region, the area from which Dragon, Dragon ruled, considering of an army of several thousand mercenaries and warriors in an attempt to reclaim Mauritania in the name of Cerredomin. They were led by six brothers, each very adept at their branch of combat. Sliske appeared before them as the campaign was about to set off, disguised once again and granted them great powers. The campaign advanced, albeit with difficulty. After one last stop, the army reached the walls of the capital Darkmayor and Castle Drakan. Siski then appeared before her six brothers, which were Arim, Darok, Guten, Karel, Torag and Verak, and spoke to them. He told them that he had given them power so that they could serve their god, but now it was time for them to serve his own. The brothers all subsequently died at the next night, but they were not killed by Sliske and were interred under barrows just outside Darkmayor, ending their campaign. Sliske raised the brothers as his undead minions and stashed them with guarding a precious Zerosian artifact. Draken had surf suffered a blow, but due to the brothers' deaths, the campaign failed and the vampires turned out victorious. Sliske then proceeded to fulfill an assignment for his ally Azanadra, who has been imprisoned in Zeldraokt pyramid after fruitlessly attempting to restore communication with Zeros. Siski took an ancient artifact and concealed it within the Barrow's crypts, ordering his wife to guard it. The artifact was an icon that absorbed prayer energy and as an address figure they would later need it. The Barrow's brothers did a good job as the icon was never stolen until as an address later ordered its retrieval. As the purge of Zeros' followers reached its peak, the last army of Zeros was trying to secure the location of the Majorette Ritual Stone where they were at when they were attacked by Ceredominists. Zeros' forces were lead led by the devastating creature Nex. The Ceredominists had no hope of defeating such a strong force, so with great effort they drove Zeros' army back into a cave where they were sent into an enchanted sleep, after which the cave was sealed. Ceredomin then erected a temple of the lost ancients around it. As even Zeros's most powerful champion, Azanadra fell to the forces of Zamorak and Saradomin, and the settlements of Zeros fell one by one, Siski did what he did best and went into hiding. Towards the end of the God Wars, a small flock of Armadale's Aventis followers were ambushed by a much larger Jar group of demons that Zamorak had sent. The Aventis carried the God Sword, an exceptionally powerful weapon imbued with the power of a deity. Unable to repel the attack, the Aventis fled into the very same temple, unaware of where it covered. Forces from all sides soon arrived and the battle for the God Sword erupted. Sliske, seizing the opportunity, disguised himself as a follower of Gothics and used this manipulating influence on a group of Cerredominists. He told them that Gothics was an almighty god, the only one powerful enough to stop the war, which sometime later turned out to be true and that a ritual had to be performed to awake Gothix from his slumber. The priests, among whose number was Ashwalat Race, converted to Gothixianism and performed the ritual. To their horror, the ritual instead unlocked the seal Saradomin had placed, thus opening the ancient prison, as had been the Majorette's intention. Next and her forces were free, 
and caused a huge losses among all sides and Sliske slipped away again, his work done. Unbeknownst to Sliske, all force forces, those of Zamorak, Armadil, Saradomin and Vandos, united for the only time in history to drive back the Zerusian. Eventually, they succeeded and they sealed the army of Nex behind a frozen door. Its key was smashed into four pieces, one to be guarded by each faction. Their common threat defeated, the factions once again broke into fighting one another. Ashwelot saw the error of her ways and became a nature spirit in the icy prison, ready to warn people for the atrocities ahead should they ever breach the frozen door. When the god wars were brought to an end by Gothic's large campaign and a subsequently banishment of the gods with the edicts of Gothic's, the god of balance ordered the powerful mage, Aeternam, to freeze the temple in time, causing Nex and all others to enter a magical sleep. The following events take place during Ritual of the Majorat. Sliske, as always, arrived to the ritual in 169 of the 5th age shortly after Lucien. He revealed himself to the present adventurer as the individual who had been keeping the Barrows brothers trapped as vengeful spirits. He appeared at Garok for the ritual of rejuvenation just at the time the adventurer whom he had been following for a while, Wahisiatel, Certification and a battalion of Temple Knights were about to fight Lucien and his forces, and he joined the fight against Lucien, aiding in defeating the powerful ice demons that he summoned. When the ritual commenced, Siski went along with Lucien's suggestion that the fellow Zerosian Jalan should be sacrificed because he had become the weakest of their kind. When the decision was about to be made, Wahisiatel demanded that Lucien had to be the one sacrificed due to the danger he posed to Gelenor, starting a fight between the Zerusians and the Zamorican Majorat. During the fight, Siski summoned the Barrows brothers once more to fight off Zemurigal's followers, starting with armored zombies and ending with Zemurigal's second in command, Shahak Tirk. Zemergal summoned Arav to keep Sliske and his whites at bay, but the adventurer broke Arav's curse by using the latter's heart, and the hero of Varrock proceeded to send a flurry of attacks at Zemergal. Unable to withstand both Arav's and Azanadra's attacks, Zemergal begged Lucian for help, but after his cousin simply ignored him, he realized Wahisiatel had been right and prompted all Majorat to turn on Lucian. They agreed, and both Zerosians and Zemarikans focused their attacks on the Aspirin demigod. After the ritual was completed and Jalan was sacrificed, unfortunately, as an address among the power of Zeros, severely damaging Lucian in the process. Enraged, Lucian brought in and touched the Stone of Jazz in an attempt to use its power to punish the opposing Majorak. However, the Dragon Kin were summoned and they ended Lucian after a short but intense brawl. After witnessing Lucian's death, most of the Majorat teleported away, terrified by the dragon kin, but satisfied by the outcome of the ritual. Siski was one of two Majorats that did not teleport away, the other being Wahis Yetel. Instead, impressed by the adventurer's power, Siski remained to attempt to claim them as a new addition to his collection, but failed as the priest Akrize saved them by jumping in front of the spell that Siski had cast. Akrize was then turned into a white called Akrize the Doomed, and Sliski teleported away with his new minion, commenting that he that would do for now before Certifi could attack him. After the ritual, Sliski went in pursuit of the Dragon Kin trio and found that one of them, Srizat, had been assigned to guard the staff of Armadil, or rather, what remained of the staff of Armadil. Upon spotting the Majorat, Srizat charged at him, holding the staff. However, this led him right into Sliski's trap for a dragon kin in the Shadow Realm, and the dragon kin was immediately captured by him. Sliski proceeded to repair the staff by attaching another orb made from shards beneath the ritual plateau before turning his attention to his prisoner again. Now in possession of the staff of Armadil, Sliski's powers and characteristic traits were amplified, causing him to gain a deeper desire for a treacherous plot he considers fun. The following events take place during the World Wakes. Later, Sliske disguised himself as a shadowed figure to do some reconnaissance around Gelenor and to follow the adventurer. He could be found around the Grand Exchange, the entrance of the God Wars dungeon and near the ruins by the Legends Guild. Sometime afterwards, an archaeologist from Varrock Museum, Orlando Smith, 
discovered an ancient Gothician site in Kandaren. Thinking it may be the resting place of Gothix himself, a location that many Majorat had looked for for a long time after the end of the God Wars, Siski quickly formed a plan of action to find Gothix and undo his edict. As an Adra, Wahisietel and Actanakos also became aware of this and decided to attempt and negotiate Zeros' return with Gothix once they would have reached him, for there would be much to learn from such an ancient being and it would be more beneficial to have their own leader god return. Sliske, though initial disagreeing, seemingly went along with the plan. Despite Wahisietel's reminders of Sliske's cunning nature, Asnadra put his full trust in him. When Orlando enlisted the adventurer's help to explore a dungeon, since the adventurer could strangely be able to open the ancient door, they accidentally set up the alarm system of the cavern, unbeknownst to them also awakening gothics. After Orlando was slain by three automatons, which are part of the security system, thinking he was a majorat, and then Siski presented himself, pretending to be gothics. The adventurer did not believe this, however, and Siski revealed his true identity, explaining why the automatons had traced the majorat life form. He stated that his intention was to find Gothix and negotiate Zeros' return with him and not kill him, which is what other gods' followers were looking for. He explained that they were standing in Gothix's resting place and that triggering the alarm was sensible all over the world. He predicted that many other creatures were about to storm in, eager to reach Gothix and kill him to return their own god. As such, he advised that the adventurer side with the Zerusians, who would not kill Gothix, while planning to side with the Gothixans, who would want to protect Gothix, obviously, to reach him first. When asked why Xleski should be trusted, he simply replied, he shouldn't be. And he was right. After that, he concealed himself in the Shadow Realm, and him and the adventurer visited the Wilderness Crater, where the sword Gothix had slammed into the ground when declaring his edicts, and it was pulsating red light. Sliski explained that the sword had been activated when the alarm was triggered and that it is communicating with all the storm circles, including the Zemurkan one near Varrock. He then spy on Zemurigal and Sharak Tirk in the former's fortress, seeing Zemurigal finding out that Gothic's escape had been discovered as some dark wizards reporting to him at their stone circle was crying out with pain. They moved on to the entrance of the God Wars dungeon and noticed Commander Zeliana flying off towards the cave to return Saradomin. As they returned to the cave, the ground began shaking when Zeliana, Kriara, and Krill Tsutarot stormed in, in their attempt to assassinate Gothix, to which Liske teleported away, advising the adventurer to try not to die. He then proceeded to the ancient prison and released Nex, while his Azanadra traveled to notify Char. As the adventurer defeated Kriara and ventured further into the cave, allying themselves with the guardians of Gothix and other important Gothixian, they arrived in the center chamber when all factions attacked at once. A mighty battle erupted and after dealing with General Grardor, Krill Tsutarot, Zemurigal and Anakra, all come to return Bandos and Re Zamorak respectively, Ziliana appeared with her army and killed the guardian of Gothix, Kress, thinking him to be Gothix. Having secretly followed the Samaradominists, the powerful Zerosians, Sliski excluded, swarmed the room after a tense discussion, while no one paid attention, Siski betrayed his faction and the adventurer broke into the last chamber and rushed ahead. When the adventurer reached Gothix, they had only a, a few moments of rest before Siski quickly killed Gothix with the legendary Staff of Armadale, proving his ally's trust misplaced. Even as an Adara was surprised by Siski's act, despite earlier warnings of Wahisitel not to believe that Siski was not killed Gothix. It later became known that Siski acquired some power from Gothix. Siski's allies at this point stated with much security that such betrayal is normal for Siski and that he was still loyal to Zeros. Additionally, the other Zerosians, Marzerat, believed that he was not he has not achieved godhood by killing Gothix, which eventually turned out to be true. The next events take place during the quest Missing Presumed Death. Sometime after the death of Gothix, Siski managed to use the Staff of to discover the connection between Strizat and the Stone of Jazz, allowing him to pinpoint its location. Depending on the coordinate the adventurer had that in mind after the ritual, Siski found the stone either beneath the barrows, on the bottom of the Grandor Sea, underneath Trollheim, 
underneath the temple of the lost ancients or in the cave where he had killed Gothix. He kept the, this possession of both elder artifacts a well-guarded secret. Having learned of the Dragon King's wrath due to the events at the 18th ritual, Sliske did not use the stone to empower himself any further. Instead, he found out it could also be used to transfer knowledge only and by doing so he saw visions of Saradomin, V and Lucien among others using it. His power greater than ever and possibly in possessions of the two most powerful elder artifacts, Siski decided to host a game amongst the gods returning to RuneScape after the death of Gothix when he was ordered by Zeros himself to create a distraction for his return. To this end, he captured the Empyrean Citadel in the sky where the Evientes of Armadale once held court. He took it over with his whites and they transformed the throne room into a stage for himself with podiums for several gods to stand on. He began planning his Grand Ascendancy, an event at which he would announce his ascension to godhood to the gods. Soon after the end of the Cataclysmic Battle of Lumbridge, Sliske set his plans in motion. He knew Armadale would attempt because he had conquered his citadel and Zamorak would not miss an event where another Majorette would follow his path and invited them without expecting any protest. He also assured Bendos' attendance by promising him war and the presence of his fellow gods. Additionally, he invited Zeros, Gothix symbolically being his murderer, Marimbo and Brassica Prime, although only the latter would attend in person. Zeros, of course, was not able to attend in person since he was still recovering, Gothix was of course already dead, and Marimbo did not attend for unknown reasons. Next, he set up a plot involving the murders of several Cyberdominist monks and Serenist elves and made it seem as if elves had slain the monks and Cyberdominists slain the elves, thus assuring the attendance of Cyberdomin, who traveled to the citadel to confront Seren. The Crystal Goddess was absent, however, having shattered herself after the God Wars. Although Zeros was not corporeally present, a purple haze did appear above his podium. Additionally, the gods took some of their followers with them, all of whom were denied access to the throne room by the Barrows brothers and Ecrisei, including Sliske's Erosion Majorat allies, to their great dismay. Finally, Sliske needed to ascertain the presence of his nemesis Iklarin, God of the Dead, and to accomplish this he kidnapped Herald Death, Reaper of Souls. This kidnapping rendered the souls of the dead unable to pass on the grim underworld and so Iclarin began an investigation as to what had happened to his colleague while Harold's helpers would attempt to fulfill his duty in his absence. While doing this, Iclarin joined forces with the aforementioned adventurer who was investigating the murders of Cyberdominists and Serenists and when they noticed Iclarin's arrival, Whites to whom Siskia had assigned his task to emerge from the ground and attacked, leaving an invitation box upon defeat, which contained Iclarin's invitation. Although the god realized it was another of Siskia's tricks, he and his companion were forced to go to the citadel to rescue Death, and the adventurer began searching for him while Iclarin entered the throne room. A heated discussion immediately sparked up between the gods, which Iclarin desperately attempting to convince them of Sliske's manipulative and devious nature. As the adventurer reached the end of Sliske's puzzles and received an invitation to the event rather than finding death, Sliske himself arrived as well. He presented death in a cage and strews out in another before revealing the ascendancy had been a ruse, announcing his possession of the Stone of Jazz and declaring a contest. He promised he would give the stone to whoever would manage to kill the most deities by the next solar eclipse. The shocked gods responded in various ways when Sliske released Trizat and tossed the adventurer the key to Death's cage before retreating into the Shadow Realm. Strizat and Ekrisir immediately gave in to his rage and began firing dragon fire as the various false users around the room, prompting all the gods save Presica and Iclarin to teleport to safety. The adventurer managed to release Death, who retrieved his sight and teleported himself and his two companions away. Afterwards, Trizat caused some destruction around the citadel before leaving as well. Only Brassica Prime remained on this podium, although it seems he was oblivious to the events that had transpired, thinking the ascendancy to be a tribute to himself and enjoying the feeling of his podium's cushion against his leaves. As it would transpire, the true purpose of the ascendancy was to serve as a diversion for Zeros. 
With the other gods preoccupied by Sliske's tournament, Zeros could now return unnoticed and unchallenged as he had planned. Zeros' current whereabouts remain unknown. The gods intend to participate in his contest in their quest for power, be it voluntarily or not, and sometime after the ascendancy, a large battle broke out between Bandos and Armadale, the former aiming to win the stone ladder to stop its ar his arch nemesis. The Imagerat himself at one point began experimenting with his power by torturing and manipulating the minds of the Barrows brothers, amplifying their powers immensely. A short time later, a number of men, women, wizards, all and witches began to follow Siski's ideals, presumably learning of him through Relumia and sought to turn the godless against the other factions during the battle between Bandos and Armadale that broke out after the ascension. Others would play a little game before giving one of the factions a set of golem parts. Of course, this was all part of an in-game event that is now concluded. And now the following takes place during the quest Fate of the Gods. Siski was later, later enlisted by Aznadrat to pull the World Gate out of the Shadow Realm and allow Zaros to return to Gelenor. Siski informed the adventurer about how to repair the World Gate and helped in returning it to the Material Realm. Then the adventurer traveled to Freneske and either helped or harmed the return of Zaros, as Sliske made sure to let the adventurer know that they were not obligated to help Zeros, but they could also create a light simulacrum instead of a dark simulacrum, and it would only harm the god. When Zeros finally returned to Gilenor, he gathered all of his followers, assigning them orders and tasks. However, displeased by Sliske's actions in general, since he, his when Zeros finally returned to Gelenor, he gathered with all of his followers, assigning them orders and tasks. However, displeased with Sliske in general, he excommunicated the Majorat, likely to the, his now questionable loyalty. Later, the adventurer encountered Sliske again in the Empyrean Citadel, and Sliske promised to answer one of their questions. He revealed that he did not, in fact, ascend to godhood by killing Gothics and confirmed his possession of the Stone of Jazz when asked, although he stated that he has used it sparingly in order to avoid the wrath of the Dragon King. When asked whose idea it was to kill Gothics, he admitted it was in his own, not Zeros's, and when asked what his, what his plans were, he revealed that he intended to allow the second God Wars to continue, taking a backseat in the events, and he, he claimed to keep the few promises he does make meaning that he will continue to aid Zeros through the distraction provided by his tournament despite his excommunication. And when he was asked which color was his favorite, he replied something along the lines that he liked blue or green, but if he had to pick only one, it would probably be aquamarine. Finally, he rewarded the World Guardian, which is the adventurer, with a gift, the ability to see into the Shadow Realm without the Ring of Visibility, as he wishes for them to see him coming in the future. This has been the history of Sliske up until now. Of course, the events of uh, Dishonor Among Thieves, as well as Nomad's Elegy and the upcoming quests in the series of Sliske, will not be documented in this episode. Siski had a very long history of scheming and he is not about to stop yet, so the rest of his information shall be compiled and divulged in the future, because as it stands, this is pretty much where he stands at the moment. I hope you enjoyed this story and I hope you also will look forward to the part 2 in which we will finish Siski's story but that will probably be in at least, I'd say, a year, because a lot of quests have yet to be unreleased, and at the current moment, Sliske is not really about able to be found in-game, but he recently has smashed a gigantic sword in the Grand Exchange, which he uses as a parody of Gothic's Edicts, and at the same time, he also uses it as a scoreboard for his god-killing game. 